I'm delighted to be back here on stage with all of you with one of my favorite members of the United States Senate, don't tell the other 99 of them <laughs> that I said that, um, to join us here today. Senator Cruz from Texas, as Nikhil mentioned, is the chairman of the Subcommittee on Aviation and Commercial Space, um, which is critically important to the work that we do here at Uber and Uber Elevate. But um, equally as important, he is from the great state of Texas. And we know that the state of Texas has a long and um, important history in the aviation space. And as we've talked about extensively, uh, we will be piloting our Uber Air product in Dallas-Fort Worth in the very near term. So, Senator, we're thrilled to have you joining us today. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Danielle. I'm thrilled to be here and, and thr thrilled to join all of you this afternoon for this conversation. Fantastic. So I asked Sharon, who was my last guest, um, about her transport mode for getting here because I found out though she just works across the street so she she was allowed to walk um, you probably have a lot of places that you're going but give us an example of maybe when you're at home in Texas and you're getting back to Washington what does that look like from a transportation perspective well what's interesting is is here in DC I don't own a car uh, and and when I was when I was elected to the Senate it was 2012 and, and I just assumed okay we'll get an apartment in DC I'll have to buy a car and and, and I actually rented a parking space at my apartment and for four months from January to April I paid for the parking space and I found I didn't need a car because look for official events I have a staffer who has a car who can take me who drove me over from the Capitol here mm -hmm. and if I'm doing something personal if I want to go see a movie I call an Uber and so I don't own a car because I use Uber to get around and and not only that but I was moronic enough to pay four months for a parking space that sat empty until I finally said, this is really dumb, and then canceled my parking space. <laughs> That's great to hear. Thank you for your support. I would be remiss if I didn't remind you that outside we also have some um, demonstration products for our micro-mobility. So I'm not sure if you've checked out the electric bike or the bike lanes that exist from the Capitol down Pennsylvania Avenue, but I assure you they're remarkable, and scooters are also a really fun way to get around. Yeah, I'm not sure you're going <laughs> to see me on a motor scooter anytime soon. It's okay. That's okay. I never am wearing the appropriate footwear myself, but um, oftentimes it is a great way to get around. So um, we've talked a lot about Washington. Let's talk a little bit about Dallas. Let's talk about Dallas Fort Worth. Talk to me a little bit about the um, this aviation history that it has and what your constituents are telling you about the future of urban air mobility and how excited they are, hopefully, for us to arrive. Listen, we're thrilled to welcome Uber Elevate uh, to North Texas, to Dallas. Um, I, I, I think it's going to be really exciting. Um, I, I am a consumer of Uber. I'm looking forward to being a consumer of Uber Elevate. And, and you know, I'm reminded a, a good friend of mine in, uh, in the tech industry is Peter Thiel. Yeah. And, and Peter and I have known each other 20 plus years. Peter famously said, talking about our society, we were promised flying cars, and instead we got 140 characters or less. <laughs> Um, and, you know, look, I mean, I grew up watching the Jetsons. I mean, the, the, this, yes. the premise and business plan and vision of Uber Elevate is exciting. And, and, and I will say, Texas, part of the culture of Texas mm -hmm. is we welcome and we celebrate innovators. Mm -hmm. it, it is a state where it's a state built by wildcatters. It's a state where small business owners, I grew up, my parents were small business owners. Mm -hmm. and, and that, the culture of the state, we celebrate uh, taking entrepreneurial risk and, and, and innovating and transforming. And, and, and so, uh, in, in fact, I, I uh, made a somewhat tongue-in-cheek, but, but not entirely uh, <laughs> offer of a wager to some of the company leadership, because I guess the two cities that it's launching initially are Dallas and, and L.A., and, and I said I will bet you almost any sum of money that Dallas is going to prove orders of magnitude easier to stand this up and get this business moving than L.A. is. Now, <laughs> I'm happy to be proven wrong, but I, I don't think I will be. I think it's a competition that we would support, I the competition. Um, you're going to have to add Melbourne, Australia to that list, though, as well, because we announced also that we'll be adding Melbourne. So Awesome. There you go. Yeah, we're excited about that. That's fantastic. Um, so when you think about it and you think about this new technology, what is most exciting to you? What is, um, when we talk about Uber Air and we talk about Uber Elevate, um, our drone delivery products, what gets you most excited about? What do you think is most impactful? I am passionate 
about free enterprise. Um, the American free enterprise system, it's been, been the most amazing disruptor mm -hmm. and the most powerful cure for poverty that the world has ever seen. Now, to drive free enterprise, you've got to have disruption. You've got to have what the economist Joseph Schumpeter called creative destruction. Yes. Um, Uber does that for a living. In fact, I invoke Uber all the time as an example of changing a means of, of delivery of goods, delivery of service. And, and, you know, it's fascinating. With the Uber business model, suddenly Uber created billions, if not tens or hundreds of billions of dollars of assets that didn't exist the day before. Nobody knew that we had billions and billions of dollars worth of taxis sitting all over the country. Because until you could unlock them, it was just your car parked in the driveway. And yet suddenly with a vehicle to connect that asset, that became a valuable asset. It's, it's very much the same as Airbnb. Nobody knew we had millions of hotel rooms sitting around the country. And suddenly what was a useless spare room that two times a year when your mother-in-law visited, and you're lucky if it's only two times a year, <laughs> uh, you used it then and never again. Suddenly you had trillions in real estate asset cre created out of thin air. And, and that destruction, and I, and I think Uber Elevate has the same potential to, to give us those flying cars and, and the applications, the changes of that, in a prior life, in the, in the George W. Bush uh, administration, mm -hmm. I, I was at the Federal Trade Commission, yes. and, and, and I was the head of policy at the FTC. And I chaired the e-commerce task force, and, and, and we conducted public hearings, three days of public hearings on e-commerce and barriers to e-commerce. And the pattern was consistently the same, mm -hmm. that you would have an e-commerce innovator come into a sector and the existing producers, the bricks and mortar producers, would work with government regulators to try to put barriers to entry to stop that disruption. Right. You guys encounter this with taxi commissions all over the country. Indeed. Um, that's one manifestation of it, but it is that creative destruction that, that drives the innovation in America, that drives the opportunity, that drives the standard of living. And, and so in the Senate, my number one priority is and always has been jobs, jobs, jobs. Mm -hmm. And you get that by creating an environment where innovators and small businesses can be created, can grow, can expand. And one of the things I love about Uber, you've also created a million small businesses. Yes. When I ride in Uber, I almost inevitably ask the Uber driver, all right, how do you like it? And they could say just about anything, almost without exception, they say, I love it. They're usually doing something else also. It's usually not their only job. But they say, it's great. I can make some extra money, and it, can, it lets me do something else I want to do, and suddenly I'm running my own business. That is an amazing and empowering thing. Yeah, it's absolutely. Thank you for telling that story. Let's talk a little bit about your role as the chairman of the Aviation Subcommittee. Um, you talk about innovation, and you talk about the role to not hinder that innovation. And I think that that's something that we would um, definitely want to support. What have you done in this aerospace industry? I know previously sure. within the space community, right. for instance. But can you talk a little bit about what you've done there to help open up that innovation? So for, for four years, for the last four years, I chaired uh, the Science and Space Subcommittee of the Senate Commerce Committee, and so focused a lot on space mm -hmm. and had real success passing bipartisan legislation mm -hmm. on space. And, and so over those four years, passed three different substantive pieces of legislation. Passed the Commercial Space Launch Competitiveness Act, which established property rights in, in space, which reduced the regulatory burdens in space, which helped nurture and expand the commercial space bu business, worked in a bipartisan way with my colleagues, passed it through the Senate, passed it through the House. Obama signed it into law. Uh, in 2017, I passed the NASA Authorization Act of 2017, worked again in a bipartisan way, among other things, it extended the International Space Station, the usable life mm -hmm. of the ISS, passed both houses uh, of Congress, President Trump, it was one of the first bills he signed into law. And then in addition to that, on, on the Armed Services Committee, uh, I authored and passed into law uh, an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act mm -hmm. that for the first time directed the Department of Defense to develop and implement 
a space-based missile defense testbed uh, to begin working to develop missile defense against rogue states like a North Korea or an Iran or another rogue state that might launch an ICBM mm -hmm. against America. That, all three of those were bipartisan. That's great to hear. And it's an interesting testament. If you think about an area like space, there are very few substantive areas where you have major pieces of legislation, two major pieces of legislation, the first two that I pointed to, one signed by Obama and one signed by Trump. Yeah. Um, th that, that really, I think, demonstrates the bipartisan commitment that, that we've seen. Actually, just this morning, I spent this morning at the NASA headquarters oh. because we just renamed the street in front of the NASA headquarters. And this is a bill that I introduced. Okay to rename the street Hidden Figures Way. Bravo. Um, if any of y'all have seen the movie Hidden Figures. Yes. Incredible movie tells the story of, of the African-American women mathematicians, they were called human computers, mm -hmm. uh, who did incredible work that helped us orbit the Earth, go to the moon, and, and, and at the dedication uh, the families of those women featured in the mm -hmm. movie were there, including a, a, another human computer isn't in the movie but is in the book. Dr. Christine Darden was okay. there. It's powerful and inspirational, reminds us what we can do. Now, so all of that I say, on space we've seen great success. Now this year what happened is the Commerce Committee took space and combined it with aviation. They used to be separate committees. They're now merged, so it's effectively doubled the jurisdiction. So I like to say now the committee's jurisdiction is everything a foot off the ground and all the way up. <laughs> um, aviation, I'm excited. The, these are issues, obviously, there are a ton of aviation jobs in Texas. Texas is a hub for aviation and space. But aviation, I'm excited to, number one, ensure safety. You've got a critical responsibility yes. with safety, and that's going to be a challenge for Uber Elevate to Absolutely. think through those issues. Yep. We, in order to have people confident to ride, uh, you've got to have people confident that it's going to be safe, that their families will be safe, and that, that, that's always a threshold you address. Mm -hmm. But we also want an environment where people can innovate and expand, and, 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 and I'm looking forward to, on the aviation side, particularly with the growth of drones, with the growth of, of you know, e-vertical takeoff and landing yep. vehicles, that, that, that aviation is dramatically changing. That's an exciting time to be thinking through how do you create a regulatory environment that both ensures safety, ensures that the airspace that you don't have problems with, mm -hmm. with congestion or, or, or accidents, but also that is conducive to innovation. That's great to hear. Um, two things in response to that. One of them is that um, I have my daughters here, and we saw Hidden Figures, and we loved it. We talked with a previous guest about their workforce shortages. You talked about jobs. There are workforce shortages in these issues. You have employers here who are looking for the best and the brightest. Many of them are um, obviously in Texas. Yeah. Um, but what else can Congress do to help with the workforce shortages and also help address the very limited number of women who are in this industry? I think it's less than 6% that are right now participating. So, so how old are your girls? They're nine. They're nine. All right, so I'll tell a story that I told this morning. Um, so I took, Heidi and I, we have two girls, and, and they're eight and 11. Um, and so I took them to see Hidden Figures, and I took Heidi, my wife, and I also took my mom. So we all saw the movie, uh, which was incredible and powerful and inspirational. We went, went home that night. And for my girls, it was the first time they had seen a movie that had segregation in it. Mm -hmm. And so Heidi and I ended up, as we were putting them to bed, we had about an hour-long conversation that was a, it was a wonderful conversation where our girls were like, well, why would anyone do that? that that's so stupid. <laughs> And it's like, yes, it's idiotic, and we had a, good, a very good conversation mm -hmm. about the troubled history of racial relations in our country and segregation and Jim Crow and how all of that mm -hmm. played out. But another component of it, so Hidden Figures begins with uh, they're computing the orbit of Sputnik right after the Soviet Union has launched Sputnik. Well, my mother graduated from Rice in 1956, and okay. she graduated with a math degree. Mm -hmm. She went to work at Shell as a computer programmer, okay. and then she went to work at the Smithsonian helping compute the orbits of Sputnik. Wow. And so I was telling my girls, I said, you know, Mimi uh -huh. was doing what you saw those amazing mathematicians doing. Mm 
That's incredible. Uh, my mom is 84. I asked my mom, I said, all right, how realistic was that? How much was that what it was like being a woman who was a mathematician and a computer mm -hmm. programmer in, in the 1960s or my mom in the 1950s? She thought the movie was very, very accurate. And, is, and, and I made a comment. I said, you know, to, a more, to, to the modern ear, it was odd to hear people referred to as computers. We think of a computer as right. a hunk of metal on our desk, not a person. And my mom cracked up laughing. She said, when I started at Shell, my very first job, my job title was computer. computer. Uh, and, and so I got the chance with, with the families of, of the three women featured in, in Hidden Figures to congratulate them and say, we have the great blessing to be the children of computers. That's amazing. That's amazing. What a great story. Thank you for sharing that. You, you did have a substantive question yes. that I got, I got uh, I try. digressed I try. on. Look, workforce development is hugely important, and, and, and in particular the STEM fields in inspiring young people. One of the reasons I'm so passionate about space mm -hmm. is space has the power to inspire. I mean, every little boy, every little girl has gazed up in the stars and wondered what's out there. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the things that I'm happy about, like a street sign renaming may not seem that consequential, but 100 years from now, kids will go to the NASA headquarters and ask their mom or dad, what, hidden figures, what does that mean, and hear the story. And those stories are inspirational. I also think we can do a great deal more on education. So I've introduced legislation that would create a federal tax credit $10 billion a year, $100 billion over 10 years, mm -hmm. for contributions to scholarship granting organizations, half of it for K through 12 education, half of it for vocational training, apprenticeships, workforce development, mm -hmm. all designed to increase the resources, the competition, the choices, and the innovation in education. And so that's something that I'm working very hard to build support for, empowering parents, empowering students, and hopefully raising a, a whole new generation of young people who are inspired and want to change the world and, and want to create the next flying car or the next uh, incredible innovation that, that, that transforms the world. It's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. What do you wish that your colleagues in the Senate learned or could learn from the folks in this room today? What would you take back to your colleagues when you tell them what you did today and who you talked to? What's the message that you want them to hear from this community that we should be sharing with those colleagues? The power of innovation. Um, you know, there's a great picture. Um, actually, let me step back from that. In our country, we're having a big debate right now a big debate about the direction of the country. We're having a big debate about socialism versus free enterprise. That is as fundamental an economic debate as our country can have. Mm -hmm. um, on that debate, no one here will be surprised to know I am an emphatic defender of free enterprise. Mm -hmm. and, and I think socialism doesn't work. One of the reasons socialism doesn't work is it, is it stifles innovation. It calcifies the socioeconomic strata. So if you're rich, you stay rich. If you're poor, you stay poor. There's a picture online that I love. It's a picture of the founders of Microsoft in 1978. You got Paul Allen with long hair and mm -hmm. a beard. Uh, you got Bill Gates with glasses as big as hubcaps. <laughs> They're college dropouts, and they look like the Bee Gees. <laughs> and underneath it has the simple legend, would you invest money with these guys? <laughs> and you think about what they were doing. They were taking on Big Blue, the Leviathan, the unstoppable giant corporation. And those handful of college dropouts did that, toppled it. Now look, Microsoft is now the Leviathan, and I hope and believe there are thousands of other crazy young people in their garage taking them on. That innovation, that's what Uber is doing. And as Uber gets bigger, I look forward to the next people taking you guys on. It's that whole process of rethink, not only does it expand opportunities, but it also makes the bigger companies more innovative because they have to, they innovate or die. And, and, and so that spirit of innovation, and by the way, government power and statism is, I think, fundamentally incompatible with that spirit of innovation, that you've got to allow small businesses and entrepreneurs 
to direct capital to a need if that innovation is going to drive economic opportunity. It's amazing. I'm going to ask you one last question before we go. One of the other announcements that we made with regards to innovation here at the Elevate Summit was about our drone program and the work that we're doing with the city of San Diego in terms of drone delivery and connecting it with Uber Eats. We announced a partnership with McDonald's and there'll be other uh, local restaurants that'll be participating in that, whether it's here or whether it's in Texas. If you had to, you know, tell the guys what place to look at for adding to Uber Eats for drone delivery, what would be your pick? Oh, look, I'd love to get decent Mexican food in, in D.C., but uh, <laughs> that would be a long flight. That would be a long flight. That would be a long um, flight. Short distances, sir. I, 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 I will make, make a request, which, which is that as you're innovating, please don't make a robot cyborg that looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger and, okay. and, and is designed to exterminate Noted. humanity. Noted. <laughs> we'll end on that note. Senator Cruz, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.